ban jewel again <laughs> first things first though i gotta check my diary and see what happened to it there was ripping sounds you hold on person diary <gasps> has actually ripped pages what how many pages did you rip out how far my goodness <laughs> oh excuse me i'm so shocked it made me sneeze <laughs> all the way back to the 2nd of october all that oh gosh have I forgotten more stuff now? Darn first doll. Messing with my memories. I'm gonna assume this is Tay. Wake up, Miss Sleepyhead. Um Again, it was Tay's voice that woke me up today. <sighs> I barely opened my eyes and said, Good morning. Tay's smile still looked blurry. Um Tay. Hey, you're awake? <laughs> you still look like you're sleeping. Nah, I'm not. I'm awake. No, you're not. Here, take my hand. I'll help you get up. Tay reached out his hand. Just leave me be. I'll get up when I feel like it. And before I could even hold on to it properly, he grabbed me and sat me upright. I felt dizzy from suddenly sitting up. Oh dear. Uh, you're so cruel. You came to wake me up today? Yeah, why? You're disappointed Yano didn't come? No. <sighs> You'll become the Joker if you yawn like that. You'll feel better after you wash your face. Okay. Then I'll go and prepare breakfast. Don't go back in bed, alright? Okay. <sighs> I stretched my arms, but I couldn't stop yawning. Ugh, so sleepy. As I dozed off, even while sitting up straight, Tay didn't leave and kept watching me with suspicion. I can't trust you. I'm not going back to sleep, I swear. Alright, alright, then get ready and come out. Okay. I spaced out at the door Tay just closed. For some reason, I can't focus very well and feel dazed. Maybe because you just had your memories literally ripped out of you. I feel sluggish for some reason. The tea Tay gave me must have done its job really well. I felt not only relaxed, but also as if all my energy was sucked out. That's not normal. No, actually, I've been feeling like this every morning these days. Since Tay's been bringing me Triple Z every night. Every night? How much time have I missed out on? Ugh, let's get up. Hmm? A text? I grabbed my phone from the bedside table. It's from Soy. Really? Oh. Did you hear? Tay's been working at Banjul. We have to go there today. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, Soy. Of course you would say, oh my god. There it is. I can just feel her excitement from the text. She'll probably be more hyper in the classroom. She already knows. It hasn't even been a week since Tay started working. But since Soy figured it out already, all the girls will soon know too. I'm worried. I hope his followers don't bother him at work. No. I guess his fans who go to the cafe to see him will help the business there. Well, I guess it won't be any harm to Tay. I decided to think positively. Tay is always careful and takes care of himself well, so there won't be any need to worry. And I guess it's good. I was going to take them to the cafe soon so they would have found out anyways. I should go to that cafe called Banjul this afternoon with Soy and Shinbi. Let's do it. So I'm going to be the lead. Oh, you got up. Good morning. <laughs> hey, good morning. Thanks for the salute. Red was talking excitedly about something when he stopped to say good morning. What were you talking so excitedly about? I've been cast as the lead of the drama club's play. So I was telling everyone how awesome my role is. Ahem. It's so cool. A justice warrior fighting against evil to defend the world. It's as if the play was made especially for Red. Yano sparkled his eyes and said. Red shrugged his shoulders to hear that. 
I know, right? I was meant to do this. I never expected to find another person who is similar to you. It is indeed a large world. <sighs> Lance sighed and said, Why don't you just be honest and say you're jealous? Well, I guess no one would ever ask you to be in a play like this. I would refuse even if someone does ask. Hmm. <laughs> Today I won't be bothered by anything you say. Red and Lance started bickering again. I never imagined that this would be how I realized another day has started. <laughs> that was how much they fought in the morning. Aren't you two even exhausted? I send my condolences to my eyes for having to see you boys fight as soon as they see the light. Yuri arrived just in time and scolded them. Thank you, Yuri. Or actually, he dissed him. He dissed him good. Good morning, Yuri. Hey, kiddo. Did my honey sleep well, too? I miss him calling my honey my honey. <laughs> Yuri. <sighs> Yeah, how about you? Nope, a long night was too lonely. <laughs> Yuri slithered towards me like a serpent and <laughs> told me. How about it, my honey? If you're worried about me, why don't you spend a passionate night? Ow! A slipper flew through the air and exactly hit Yuri's head. And as always, Lan stood where the slipper came from. He was barefoot on one foot, but his eyes that were treating Yuri like a vermin were as cold as ever. Oh, you guys. You never learn, do you? I would like to be known for my perseverance. It paid off. I don't know about perseverance, but I get that you're stubborn. Why don't you just sit down? <laughs> you're such a mom, Tay. Yuri grumbled at what Tay said, but he quietly sat beside Lance. As Yuri sat by him, Lance backed away a bit. He obviously still doesn't want to deal with him. Anyways, the story got off track, but I'll come home late from now on since I have rehearsals. Today's late because of work and red, too. The house will become more quiet now. Yana looked a bit sad. Tay must have told everyone about his job. Actually, I quite look forward to the silence. Of course, it would be best if just one more person would come late. No, actually not come at all. Why are you looking at me? I did not. Lance stopped staring at Yuri and repi re replied, <laughs> replied coldly. Until my honey is gone, I will never leave this house. Unless I was being really bitchy to you, like I was that one time in an alternate timeline. I'm so sorry about that. I made you leave. Ugh. Oh, Yuri. Speaking of which, I think you've been coming home too late these days. What do you do outside anyways? It's adult stuff. They say curious kitties get killed, don't they? So, no more. Yuri winked and gave us a sneaky smile. Ugh, I don't even want to know. It's just drum practice! Gosh! I feel like I'll become that dead kitty. I ignored his wink and talked to Tay. Oh, right, that reminds me. Can I go to your cafe today? Today? Yeah, I think my friends will have time. Of course, any time is great. Tay smiled happily. I think it's the brightest smile I've seen from him recently. Was he disappointed that I didn't go the first day? You could say that. You must have liked the cafe. Oh, no, don't tell me that we've gone already. And we've forgotten. Huh? I've never been there. How could I like or not like... I felt confused, but Yana pulled up my clothes and whined. Mm, I wanna go too. Really? Then let's go together. Okay, master. <laughs> I think you have cleaning duties today. Oh. Yana quickly hardened his cute smiling face and pouted. Come to think of it, Yana had cleaning duties this whole week. Disregarding your duties to go play is a very poor attitude. Playing hooky is bad, don't you think? Lance thrust a dagger into Yano's heart. Oh, don't do that, Lance. Poorly little Yano. He's being harsher than usual today. I heard the government's been really busy. Lance must be stressed out, too. Ugh. 
Master, sorry. I don't think I can make it. There are still a lot of chances, so we can go next time. Master... Okay, we'll go together next time. You won't become a bad student for missing your cleaning duties once, but you should do your best at what you've been assigned to do. When you come, I'll make sure to bring you cake, so cheer up. Wow, really? Okay, thanks! Now, let's stop the mushiness here and have breakfast. Eating meals regularly is crucial for your skin. Yuri tapped his water glass like a king. You haven't held a single bit to prepare the meal, and you're the loudest. Alright, wait a moment. Tay soon brought out the food. <laughs> oh boy. Such bickering. After noisily finishing our meals, we took the limo and again made a fuss at school. And we're here. I was wondering when you were going to show up. Today's classes. Yes. Today we won't use our textbooks. Everyone close your books. What? The class stirred at what Mr. Eugen said. It's science class right now. Mr. Eugen was assigned as a spe spe special lecturer f for today. <laughs> Since today's topic is genetic engineering, it does suit him a bit. There was a lot of talk surrounding this special lecture anyways. There were rumors about how Mr. Eugen ate our science teacher, and that's why she didn't come to class. Huh. Considering she's not in the office, she's probably on a business trip. <laughs> Whatever the reason, I can see everyone's pretty nervous because of him. I saw kids flinching at his every move. I mean, there are so many horror stories about the infirmary. Someone even said that a boy went into the infirmary one day and never came out. Because of that, everyone was sitting up straight before he even entered the classroom. I can see everyone was adamant about not giving in their bodies. They were unnecessarily nervous. I think I'm the only one relaxed here. The ridiculous rumors are all because of Mr. Eugen's weird behavior. He looks way too creepy, and no one would gladly approach someone whose hobby is dissecting. Besides, he even calls Beatrice, his skeleton model, his lover. A normal person would get scared and run away. I would have been uncomfortable with him too if I didn't like dolls. I feel like I can understand him, since I also like objects that resemble humans. Of course, I was scared of him at first, but after seeing him a couple more times, I changed my mind. He's not scary. Rather... You just think you should never be like him, I thought while looking at everyone's stiff backs. Master, it's fine. If something happens, I'll protect you, he whispered to me, thinking I'm scared of Mr. Eugen. But while saying that, his fists were trembling. I think I'll have to be the one protecting him. Alright, so the looks you all care about so much is nothing more than an empty shell. There's no need to be disappointed or be proud at your skin. They will all rot away when you die. And your organs are nothing important as well, so there's no need to try. Of course, you can never take care of your organs in the first place. Studying. <laughs> your brain is in the end nothing more than a blob of cells, so there's no need to try your best at studying. What is important is your bone structure. The most important issue in the world, no actually the only issue in the world, is what kind of bones you will leave after you die. Mr. Eugen started praising bones again. At that, one student gathered his courage and raised his hand. Mr. Eugen's eyebrows twitched. But, but there's nothing you can do about your bones, like, um, your, your organs. Then we are... Everyone nodded, agreeing with what the student said. But before he could even finish talking, Mr. Eugen opened his mouth and said in a very determined voice, All failures, so all efforts are pointless. Your life is a failure from the second it begins. So just live however you want. Ah! The class stirred again at Mr. Eugen's cruel words, but I felt more scared of him because of something else. He wasn't trying to be mean at all when he told us that all our lives are failures. Which means... He genuinely means every single word of it. 
It's more shocking that he actually means all of it. I suddenly felt distressed at what he said. You feeling okay there, Mr. Eugen? The whole class was still in shock, but Mr. Eugen kept on talking. In that sense, my Beatrice is truly a great being. She possesses beauty none of you failures will ever have. I've never seen that blushy look on his face before. It's disconcerting me a bit. But Beatrice was artificially made like that. That brave student from earlier challenged Mr. Eugen once again. But this time he didn't even scoff. <clears throat> You obviously know only one side of the story. Beatrice is an exact representation of actual bones. I've collected the most beautiful bones existing in this world, and put them together to model Beatrice after them. Ah, Beatrice is a perfect work of art. Then do you like all the people whom Beatrice was modeled after? No. Why? They must all have been women with the bone structure you admire. They are dead. What? Why would I like a woman who was already dead? Besides, it wasn't just one woman. Do I look like a despicable jerk who likes several women at the same time to you? Mr. Eugen sparkled his two eyes. N no that's not what I meant. So you like Beatrice for... You've been asking odd questions. Of course I like. I mean, love Beatrice. For only one reason. She has a bone structure that cannot exist in this world. She's not the bones of just one person. Her bones come from a countless number of people. In other words, she cannot exist in reality. She's like a unicorn from a fantasy. Mr. Eugen looked sad. It was as if he was using his whole body to express his yearning for the unreachable. But at the same time, he was happy to have Beatrice. He's fallen in love with a magical being that can't exist. Man, we're just getting closer and closer to being Mr. Eugen, aren't we? <laughs> Everyone didn't understand what he meant and looked confused, but I can understand what he means. I like dolls with faces that can't actually exist. It's not that I simply like hot boys. Even if I say this, a normal person wouldn't understand and look confused. Sure enough, most of the kids had huge question marks on their faces. And I had to think again after watching Mr. Eugen. If it's not a hobby people can understand, it's best to hide it. Now, do you all realize how worthless you... Hmm? You two over there. Mr. Eugen was about to talk about the pointlessness of life once again, but stopped after noticing something. Then he pointed towards us. He was pointing at... Yano and Lance, beside and behind me. He raised his glasses and peered this way. I've never seen these bone structures before. I would never have missed those. Are you both the famous transfer students? I don't know about famous, but we did transfer here. Hmm, I see. Hmm, you two stand up. I heard the chair creak and saw Lance standing up. And a bit later, Yano hesitated and got up too. Lance looked cold as usual, but sadly Yano was all tense. What is he about to do? I stiffened too to see Yano get nervous. I know it doesn't make sense. But he hasn't figured out that they were dolls, right? Mr. Eugen came to us himself. Mm -hmm. I heard Yano gulp. Hmm, strange. I've never seen such figures. It's as if they were artificially crafted. Yes, you are like dolls. Both of you. Huh? This time I saw even Lance flinch. Mr. Eugen, no way! I became desperate, thinking the boys might get exposed at this unexpected moment. No, I have to divert his attention somehow. I should... I was about to stand up from my seat, but at that moment... You're correct, Mr. Eugen. The Hot Five are indeed dolls God has crafted. It's also God who led them to this school. <laughs> In that sense, I suggest joining classes with the sophomores. Mm. 
and particularly the sophomore N class, because there are Tay and Red who are also perfect creations of... I apologize. I think she got too hyper. What happened? Did you just whack Soy across the back of the head? Shinbi stood up and dragged Soy outside. Soy writhed and screamed. Let me go! Mr. Yujin, don't forget what I said! I want to be in the same class with Tay in the end class! Shinbi! Let me go! Soy screams got further away and someone kindly closed the classroom door. Thank you, person. Mm. <laughs> uh... Really, how does this academy choose its students? Well, I'm actually more curious of how it chooses its teachers. <laughs> dear, oh dear, oh dear. I could have been in the same class with Tay! Ah, Shinbi, it's all your fault. Shouldn't you thank her for saving you? What? Nothing, I didn't say anything. I played innocent and avoided her gaze. So I was still fuming and burning with determination. Class was over a long time ago, but she was still hyper. That medicine. She might really need it. <clears throat> uh, choking. Okay. <clears throat> there we go. Stop complaining. And what are you going to do today? You said we should go to the cafe. Are we going there right now? Of course! Do you know how long I've waited for this? I had to make up for all that mess I went through during class! You're shooting laser beams. I didn't know you were that interested in tea. So I quickly turned her head and held up her finger. What do you mean? What do you mean? I was never interested in tea. All I care about is one thing. Tay's waiter uniform! What? The uniform. I heard the waiters there all wear suits as uniforms. So I heard that this morning and made a fuss about having to make a record of that. That cafe is famous for that? Now hurry up! If we stay like this, all the other girls will snatch Tay away! We have to hurry before our competitors take up the cafe! <laughs> so I clenched her fist and walked in front of us as if leading an army. I knew that the cafe was pretty unique, but I never thought they'd make the waiters wear suits as uniforms. Tay in a suit. I kind of want to see that too. Look at my face. Huh. You have no shame, you girls. You girls. I just want to see Zion. <laughs> I'm guessing this is Zion. Welcome. Oh, you came again. Yep. Hey, Zion. Did Tay come to work today? The waiter Soy called Zion looked like a cat. <laughs> he was so cute the way he grinned. Calling him by his name. Does Soy know him? <laughs> I knew you'd look for him. You knew? All the girls that came today asked for Tay. <sighs> I'm already late. Oh, don't worry. Tay's running an errand right now. He'll arrive soon, so you'll be able to see him. Is it another tea errand? Really? That's awesome! I'll lead you to your seats. Follow me. Here are your seats. Th thank you. What would you like to drink? The waiter called Zion handed me the menu. Oh, I... Um... Oh, this. Triple Z. I found a familiar tea in the menu and pointed at it with my finger. I want a secret garden, though. Okay, how about you two? Secret garden! The same. Well, you guys can have it for me, I guess. <laughs> okay, then one triple Z and two secret garden. Is that all? Hmm, let's see. I do want a piece of carrot cake, but I'm on a diet. So I said in a small voice. Wait, I didn't know Soy was on a diet. <laughs> Zion looked surprised too. What? You're not fat at all. You're actually pretty thin. What do you mean, diet? Ah, no, my clothes are just covering everything up. I'm actually really fat. Hmm? I can't tell. I told you I am! 
so I covered her mouth and laughed. Of course, there was a reason she said she's on a diet. She wanted Zion to say that she's thin. It was just so wonderful to see Soy manipulate Zion into saying what she wanted to hear. But actually, Zion really seemed to mean it. I really don't know. It's not good for you to watch your diet too much. Zion's right. Going on an extreme diet can actually make you ugly. <laughs> wow. So tall. I could just tell from a glance that the man was as tall as Yuri. Oh. It might be because I'm sitting down, but he seems so tall I felt like his voice rang downward. His rolled up sleeves, half rimmed glasses, and his long hair and a natural ponytail all suited him. He looked so good in his uniform. Hello, Mr. Hobbin. He's the manager. Huh? Soy said hi first. She knows Zion and the manager too? How? Hello, girls. I presume you're here because of this girl over here. You're right, so I dragged us here. Ah ha ha ha. It's good to be young. <laughs> but, Soy, Shinbi, you guys came here before? Yeah, several times. What? Why didn't you tell me? This is gonna get awkward really fast. I was gonna go with them, but Soy and Shinbi came here without me? What are you talking about? You told us you're busy. What? When? I don't remember. Shinbi, you were there, right? Yeah, you said no, so I came with Soy. That's how we got to know Zion and Mr. Hobbin. Of course, we didn't know Tay worked here then. Uh, I really don't remember. <laughs> Darn you. Of course, since I tore it. What? I heard a voice just now. What's wrong with you? Oh. I came back to my senses and realized everyone was looking at me. Uh, oh, it's nothing. Am I too tired? I don't want to make things awkward, so I should let it go for now. Anyways, Zion and Mr. Hobbin. This cafe is full of hot guys. No wonder Tay works here. It was obvious why Tay was hired. Suits his uniforms in a cafe only hot guys work at. They were definitely aiming for girl customers. But Zion, you came to take orders and you were just giving lip service? You have to be more enthusiastic when recommending our drinks. We'll go bankrupt like this. What do you mean, lip service? You're denying it again. AGAIN! I picked you up when you were soaked in the rain. You really just came for the harp? Mr. Hobbin... <laughs> Mr. Hobbin shook his head while looking at Zion. Zion's face was a bit red for some reason. Is he really... Is Zion the shapeshifter? Is he the cat named John? Is that what's going on? Is that why he looks like a cat? Ooh... I'm probably completely wrong. <laughs> Soaked in the rain? Who are you talking about? No, it's nothing. Why are you acting all serious? It's nothing to hide. Why so serious? Ah ha ha ha. <laughs> Zion made a fuss about not letting the manager continue his story. But Mr. Hobbin grinned and playfully suppressed Zion. This kid over here. He used to hang out often at this cafe. At first I thought he liked the tea, but it turned out that that was his motive. The harp? Yes, my family's been in the coffee business since my grandparents, and when I opened a cafe, my grandfather passed down that harp to me. He was not only a barista, but also a harpist. Right now, it's just on display, but he used to play it often before. Anyways, that kid used to come every day, but one day he stopped coming. So I was wondering what happened to him when I saw him caught in the rain one day. I was so surprised when I saw that. Really? Yeah, um, I came to the cafe to look at the harp, but it was closed. I had some business to attend to that day, so I opened the cafe late. 
He was soaking wet and ran into my arms as soon as he saw me. Then he begged to let me to then he begged to let him work here. <laughs> Do you know how surprised I was then? Zion looked at Mr. Hobbin reproachfully. Well, that was the only way I thought up then to see the harp. Harps are too expensive, so I can't even dream about getting one for myself. Harps are no longer that expensive. They're pretty affordable now. What? Idiot. You should have begged me after figuring out how much it costs. Zion glared at Mr. Hobbin again. Really? Harps aren't that expensive nowadays? But still, I was very surprised. I didn't know that the harp could make such a beautiful sound. Does someone play it? This kid here. He wasn't just saying he liked it. He can actually play it very well. It sounded good even to my ears. Stop complimenting me. You're going to end up teasing me anyways. It's not a compliment. I just said what I felt. Mr. Hobbin shrugged his shoulders. Wow! I want to see Zion play the harp! Will you show us? Not now. This kid, he can't ever stop when he starts playing. He gets so into it. So I've asked him to refrain during business hours. But one day, you'll get the chance to hear it. Ah, uh, that's a shame. So I look disappointed. But I'm just happy I get to clean the harp. <laughs> Zion's face turned red as he said that. He looked like he was in love. So many of us in love with inanimate objects. You must really like the harp. Yes, of course. It was so lovely the way he honestly talked about what he likes. He's innocent, but not quite like Yano. I smiled to think of Yano as well. I heard the cafe door open. I'm back! Oh, Tay! The cafe stirred as soon as Tay stepped in. Particularly the girls who came to see him. Huh? Tay glanced around to look for the manager in Zion and found our table. Tay and I caught eyes. He hurried and walked towards us. You came. Tay beamed. I wanted to beam back, but there were too many people glaring at me. I gave a small smile and awkwardly said hi. Oh, Tay, hello. Tay, you know her? Mr. Hobbin poked Tay's side. A little. And don't start making up funny stories. I got the things you asked for, so check them. Alright, then this old man will go back to work. I'll leave the rest to these young fellows here. Then, ladies, have a great time. The manager said goodbye and disappeared towards the kitchen. So, did you order your drinks? Oh, yes. We, we got Secret Garden and she got Triple Z. Tay smiled softly and looked at me. So I was dumbfounded at that smile and couldn't continue. You ordered that one. I knew you'd like it. Wait a sec, I'll bring you the drinks. Wait, Tay, this is my table. Tay checked the order sheet and was about to leave when Zion stopped him. But Tay didn't blink once and quietly told him. I see that you've uselessly chatted with the customers after taking your orders again. Ugh, but, but I came here first. That table over there is fervently asking for you, Zion. Now, hurry up. Ah, don't push me. <laughs> Poor Zion. Tay pushed Zion to a table on the other side. As Zion suddenly came into their sight, the girls on that table shrieked and beamed. Then wait a moment, girls. I will be back with your tea. Tay lowered his head and bowed. And before turning around, he looked at me and gave me a small smile. My heart beat fast at that amazing smile. Ah. Uh, is it because I'm seeing him working right now? I could die right now. I understand, but don't. Did you see? Did you? Did you? Irma Gerd! He looks so good in that uniform! Heart spilled out of Soy's eyes. Yep, they do that sometimes. She then suddenly turned to me, grabbed my hands, and swayed them. I'm so glad I came here with you. I knew Tay would care more for someone he knows. <laughs> Look at this! Commoners! My fabulous plan! Soy looked around the other gloomy tables and put on her proud face. I don't know about fabulous, but it does seem to be working. I know, right? Wahaha! 
Ah, <sighs> I'm glad I helped, but you seem to be close with the other workers. Huh? The manager and Zion, you were both friendly with them. Huh? What do you mean? You call them by their names and all that. Aren't you close with them? Well, you can do that too. What? I can't call them by their names when I've just met them. When Soi was about to say something, Tay walked towards us. Here are your drinks. Tay brought a tray with our drinks and a small bowl of cookies. Oh, yum! We didn't order cookies. I know. I'm getting them for you guys, so don't worry. Really? The thanks, Tay! I sense Soi's eyes shooting hearts. Come to think of it, you must be Cutie's close friends. What are your names? What? Oh, um, um, I'm S Soi, and she's Shinbi. Uh, I'm in class N with her, and I'm the class president. It was very strange to see Soi be so nervous. Her hands were even trembling. <clears throat> she even faced Mr. Yujin, but I never realized there was this side to her. She did say she likes him. She must mean it this time. It was cute the way she got nervous in front of the person she has a crush on. Tay smiled again towards her and didn't forget to ask. I see. Please take good care of her. Oh, of, of course! Of course we will! We'll never leave her side. <laughs> I'm relieved to hear that. Oh, wait. Tay was trying to be the mom again, but the table beside us cried out for him. Tay waved towards them and looked sorry. Oh, they are calling me. I'll have to go. Enjoy your time here. Tay mouthed, it's hot, so be careful to me and left in a hurry. So I was still staring at the place Tay stood at. Oh my god! Tay is so nice! He's so my type. Did you see him ask me my name? Tay asked my name! This isn't a dream, right? So I blushed and made a fuss. You always say that he's so your type when you like someone. Mr. Eugen was one of them. No, it's for real this time. I was born to meet Tay. This was meant to be. You said it was meant to be when you first saw the Ice Prince and the Chick. Of course, I do like the Ice Prince and the Chick. Ice Prince is cold, but he's handsome. And Yano's so cute I could just kidnap him. So I didn't hesitate to say dangerous things. I thought for a second whether I should text Yano and tell him to avoid her. But Tay's a bit different. If the prince and chicks are just eye candy, Tay feels like a real man. Eye candy's a bit harsh. I felt bad for Yano and Lance who suddenly turned into things good to look at. No, actually being the eye candy might be better for their safety. I don't know about Yano, but if you say that in front of Lance, you're going to be in big trouble. Oh. Oh? <gasps> You're remembering... Oh, I just heard something. A cat. I'm sorry, but I really wanted to look for his owner. A flashback to Yano? What's wrong? No, I'm just, uh, suddenly dizzy. And I feel weird. Weird? Yeah. As if something like this happened before. What is this feeling? Yawn? No? Chick? What about the chick? Are you okay? Oh my god, hey! Look, she's shaking! Are you okay? What's happening, cutie? My head hurts, and I feel dizzy. I feel like something strange is flowing inside my body. It's as if my head's caught up in a storm. What I was seeing seemed familiar, but strange at the same time. What... what is this feeling? I looked around at the sudden deja vu. Uh... It's John! While feeling dizzy, I saw Mr. Hobbin leaving the cafe with a cat in his arms. That cat... I've seen it before. Are you okay? If you feel sick, we can go. Huh? What? Oh no, that cat. That cat? It's a street cat Mr. Hobbin took in. 
His name is John. It was short for something. It's best not to say the full name. Anyways, you don't look so well, so let's finish this and go home. So I said that and drank the rest of her tea all at once. Sorry, it's my fault. No, we can come to the cafe some other time. Shinbi patted my back, looking worried. I'm really worried too. Shinbi's right. Your health should come first. Good, then should we go out? I felt sorry to see Soy and Shinbi leave in a hurry. I'm so appreciative though to you guys. You're taking so good care of her, even though you came here to look look for Tay. Oh. Anyways, what did I remember just now? I already knew that Yana was related to that cat somehow. But this memory didn't feel like mine. Then whose is it? No, what am I thinking right now? The more I thought, the stranger I felt. I felt a bit nervous. Am I okay? 